this is your time. This is it. When you allow the Lord to work with you. How did I know that was called the vocation? That is a question that we get a lot of seminarians. I'm doing all these things that I want to do, but I haven't asked God, what does he want me to do? I grew up in a family where my mom and my dad would always emphasize the value of, of prayer. God called me probably a very young age because I had some experiences. I started to pray, you know, more seriously to like for signs and and then I, you know, kind of surely after a while, this kind of signs of peace just started coming up and I was like, no, that's not what I want. But especially my mom, um, after my dad passed, he would always uh, take me with her to serve in the church, whether it is through the choir or through just many various organizations. I'm coming from a non-practicing Catholic family. And my very first time I encountered Jesus and liturgy and celebration and being at a temple, in a church, was in an evangelical church. Um, and it's difficult for me to answer because I used to um, hear a lot of vocation stories and a lot of them talked about a specific moment, about a, an encounter during Eucharistic Adoration or during a retreat. Um, and so I always thought that it was this big God moment where those guy opens up and you hear God's voice and then it's very clear but that wasn't the case for me uh, it was more of a gradual process um, through reflection through prayer and through the interactions with the people of God that I came to recognize that God was calling me to something different when I was at the university studying and, and also working in a hospital um, the hospital is an evangelical mission in Mexico and they invite me to their services every Sunday. And I was many times at those services and also they invite me to many uh, retreats and, and, and other activities they had. That was my first encounter uh, with Jesus. And so I, I kind of began to ask God, like, God, please show me what do you want of me? And that's kind of what I'll do. And, I think one linchpin that I can go to is the moment where I said, this is it. <laughs> um, this, is, this is what I feel that God is calling me to discern. And being there at the church, I, I can say that the community play a huge role in my vocation. I encountered many great people that approached me and, 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 and helped me with all the questions, questions I had. Because at that time, I didn't know even to sign myself with the sign of the cross to say the Our Father. But if I had to pinpoint at least one little moment, um, I think it was, I was having dinner with some friends uh, one day, uh, and there was a person at the next booth who was having a difficult time. And for some reason, I was drawn to that person. And so we had a conversation and uh, that person left uh, the restaurant a little happier, a little, yeah, a little happier. And so I turned back to my friends and I turned back to my best friend uh, who uh, is an atheist. And I said, ah, I'm going to be a priest, huh? And he said, yeah, you are. And you're going to be a great priest. In these circumstances, you want to listen to God's words. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you, a prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Then the Lord said, have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you. You have been trusting on this, and you have to continue trusting the Lord Jesus. The first person I told was actually my dad, and my dad was like, uh, so like, you know, have you ever thought of becoming a priest? So my, when my dad asked me, he was like, no, I, I would probably consider it. And it's something that I had thought about in the past, but not as seriously after I, um, after I had this encounter, I shared it with my mom and my mom encouraged me to pray even more about it and to take it to spiritual direction. It's the vocation that our Lord Jesus Christ has reserved for some men to continue his saving mission here on earth. 
And Jesus Christ is coming to our own reality. And he calls us the way we are. One of the first people that I told uh, was my family. Um, first, it was a secretary um, at the parish uh, who was super excited, but also a little hesitant. My father was elated over the moon. He said he had been praying for this forever. <laughs> my mother, on the other hand, was a little more hesitant. She's more pragmatic one in the family. And so she wanted me to focus on success. It took her a little while, uh, but now she's very excited. Um, she tells her friends, she tells her coworkers, um, whenever I <laughs> tell her what this is happening at seminary, she's like, this is what my, this is what my son's doing. Um, he's gonna be a priest. Uh, and so now, she, yes, she's very excited. She's come around. She's very proud of me. She can't wait to see me on the altar. You give your full life, not half of it. Jesus wants your entire life. Dear brothers, this is the way of the cross because the way of the cross is very beautiful. And that joy that you have in your hearts is that gift that the Lord Jesus has given you. And he will never disappoint you. He has chosen you and he wants to bring the to fulfillment the work he has begun in you. Thank you so much for your yes to the Lord Jesus in this mission of the Lord to continue bringing us salvation.